I used to be dirt poor, now I'm loaded with cash, baby. Because I played Ace Attorney. I was out buying some games till I found something better. It was Ace Attorney. Now I'm a freaking lawyer. Hi, I'm Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Did you know that you have rights? The rights to become an attorney. Here's how. I believe that we are all just a blank canvas. Every man, woman, and child in this world have unlimited possibilities. And that's why I'm saying this to you, everybody! Better play Ace Attorney. Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. 999-6969-C-A-L-L Well... I guess I better play Ace Attorney, huh? Josephine's Objection! Alright, it sounded cheesy, huh? <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Cringe, I know, but yeah, it's time. It's time, dudes, dudettes, bros, brosettes, whatevs, yeah? <laughs> ah, so, yo, hiya. Josephine's, you're after a long time of not posting shit. <laughs> oh, wait. Let me just, uh, change out my outfit, you know? Ooh, now that's better. So yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> get it? I crack myself up at times. <laughs> so yeah, today I'm playing one of my favorite games, Ace Attorney. So, I'm trying out some new shit, you know? And I just really wanted to make a video of this so I can actually replay all of it again and, well, you know, just to have a little purpose of it, you know, just to, just to not make me feel bad when I'm <laughs> when I'm just playing games and shit, playing all it. Just, I just want to play it all again, alright? Okay? Alright. Just know I'm kind of a big fan of the franchise or series and maybe since I was uh, in like 7th or 8th grade and stuff so way back in my uh, dark, depressive period in my life. And it's been a while since I last played this, and I, I won't use the help of a uh, strategy wiki or walk journals in, in this playthrough since... Alright, gotta admit something. But, uh... I used to go search up the walkthroughs for smooth sailing and shit, like, I used to go to strategy wiki to find out what, what shit to do, you know? Because I just didn't want to waste my time, but... You know, in this playthrough, I will take my time and just play it and... Try to enjoy as much content in this game. And yeah. Just, just enjoy the game, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's about it for my, uh, intro. <laughs> so, uh, enjoy. <sighs> Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. <sighs> oh, I've gotta find someone to bend this on. <sighs> someone like him. <laughs> I'll make it look like he did it. <laughs> Sadly, we saw you already. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, uh, hiya, Chief. Oh, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client as well. I mean... <laughs> guess... Guess I'm not like the other boys, Chief. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you need a defendant before this case? Uh, yeah. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. It's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life! Everything! It's all over! Same man. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Dit! Despair! Oh! I'm gonna do it, man! 
I'm gonna die! Sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. Same. Nick! Hey. Hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Told him I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over, man. I'm finished. Finished? Can't live in a world without her. Can't. Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Aw, oh, Nick, you gotta tell me you took my baby away. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspaper says it was you. <laughs> my name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying. When something smells, it's usually the Butts. <laughs> Ooh, stinky. In the, in the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That, and I owe him one. Which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. <laughs> Fuck off. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Bane, same. The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Wright. This is your first trial, is it not? Y yes, Your Honor. I'm um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Come on, Judge. I'm just having to plead the trial jitters, man. This is my first time. Murder is a serious charge for your client's sake. I hope you can control your nerves. I mean, I guess that's true. Th thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to assert in your readiness. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Head shaking, palms sweating, eyesight fading, these weak palms swing, mom's spaghetti. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. I'ma go to the serious route. Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me what's the victim's name. Yeah, I know this one. Glad I, res glad I read a case report cover to cover so many times. It's... Wait. Uh-oh. No, no way. I forgot. I'm drawing total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name. Oh, the victim? I mean, Drew, man. Yeah. Damn, you look hot, Ned. I mean, uh, I mean, the victim, uh, of course. I know the victim's name. I am um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. And I think I might. And I think I feel a hard on coming on. <laughs> look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check it out any time, okay? Um, tab? Where's the tab in my controller, Mia? Hmm? Yeah, JK. Uh, attorney's badge. No one would believe I was a defense attorney if I didn't carry this. <laughs> Why would that re- <laughs> What's with that remark? Do you not look like a lawyer would I? <laughs> Cindy's autopsy report. Mia Fey. 27. Damn. It's a couple of years. Chief Attorney at Fainco, my boss, and a very good defense attorney, Larry Butts. 23. The defendant in this case, a likable guy who's been my friend since grade school. Cindy Stone. Winston Payne. 52 years old, huh? Damn. I mean, I guess that's... I guess that's just about uh, the right amount of age that I thought of him. Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Don't worry, ma'am. I will do anything for you. Mr. Wright, who's the victim in this case? 
Um, Cinder. I mean, oh, shit. <laughs> oh my fucking! I did not mean for that. Um, wasn't it, Mr. Miss Block, Miss Cinder Block? The person in question was a victim of murder. Not you can see. <laughs> Even the judge know it. Right. If you forget something, you. St I know. I just mis misclicked. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me what was the cause of that. She died because she was... It with a blunt object, sir. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, right? Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Um, yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? Is it a dildo? Is that a dildo? I mean, who knows? I wouldn't know. The murder weapon was a statue of the Tinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. Wait. A statue of the Tinker. It's rather heavy. <laughs> the prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butts to the stand. Um, Chief? What do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. I'm always ready for you, Chief. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Don't worry, Chief. If he does say it, I am at your will. I will kill him if he does say something unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Larry gives off shaggy vibes from Scooby-Doo. <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together! We were Romeo and Juliet! Cleopatra and Mark Antony! Um... Didn't they all die? <laughs> I wasn't dumb, she just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me. Ever. Rough, bud. You were dumped. What's it to you, anyway? I'm one of them. I'm her new boyfriend. <laughs> Imagine Payne just said that. <laughs> Mr. Butt, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Hmm. Indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. <laughs> oh man, I can't. Just imagining Payne actually saying sugar daddies in court. It's fucking hilarious. Not gonna lie, this might be the game that first made me learn about these terms. The sugar daddies, sugar mamas, and the mills. Like, I played this like at, um... 7th grade, 8th grade or something? JHS? Junior high? <laughs> I, I was just curious about this and I search it up <laughs> and then that's my like first really first discovery of what these terms actually means all because of he all because of Ace Attorney daddy's sugar yes all the men who gave her money and gifts she took them money and used it to support her lifestyle dude you can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Tone was Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer the question. Yeah. Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? You know what? I want some burn entertainment, so I'm gonna wait and see what happens. Might be better not to get involved in this one. Who knows what kind of shit he'll, <laughs> he'll pull off. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, no way! That cheating she-dog! 
But you can say bitch. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> oh shit. Larry, you're not helping with the trial, man. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Gulp. Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh, he went. <laughs> what do I do? Um... I trust Larry. The important qualities of a lawyer is you should trust your client. So have him answer honestly. I know. I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. How is that a signal? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. Order. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. <laughs> Jesus, Butts. Did you just say chill to the judge? She wasn't home, man, so, like, I didn't see her. Oh, fucking hell. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Hey, uh, uh, shut up. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. Get it? Mr. Frank saw it. <laughs> Pain strikes again. Fuck off. Mr. Saw it, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes. Newspaper, uh, yes. Mr. Saw it, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. But wait, why was it strange? Hmm. Why did it look strange first? Like, why would he even want to look inside the apartment if he went out? Because, you know, if, if I were him, I would, like, thought that Larry was the, the owner of the apartment and just forgot to lock. So just, he, just, say, just him saying that he went to the apartment... He went inside the apartment to look inside it. Just scream sus. Like he's a thief or a robber. <laughs> and I saw her lying there. A woman not moving. Dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was uh, 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Shut up. I already see you at the intro, man. You did it. Hmm? Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Phoenix, trust in your client, man. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Uh, Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Are in phones supposed to work during a blackout? Uh, yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sobert used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Now, Mr. Wright. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? It's when you examine, when you cross shit. <laughs> Alright, I'm not funny. All right, right. <laughs> All right, right. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why well, you exposed to lies in the testimony the witness just gave? Lies? What? He was lying? <laughs> Phoenix, you're just you're too gullible, man. You should not be gullible if you're a lawyer. Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony, or is your client really guilty? How do I prove it's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. It's in your heart. But the ev But what's in my heart is you, Chief. 
Right. Chief. All right. <laughs> First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness face. <laughs> that sounds wrong. I mean, Chief, do you want me to rub some evidence in your face? <laughs> um, okay. What was the lie? Hmm. Ah, the time. You motherfucker, you're lying. You found the body at 1 p.m., you're sure? Hmm? Uh, yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly? <laughs> Jeez, frankly, huh? I find it hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was no body to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. Phoenix, no time for jokes. How to explain this three hour gap? <gasps> oh, that's. Oh, uh. I'm Jack. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I found that hard to believe. Mr. Sarrett, why were you so certain that you found a body at 1 p.m.? Oi, uh, well, I. gee. <laughs> that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point at contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Taste, Chief. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? <laughs> you see, when I found the body, I heard a time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh. How can it come from the television if there was a blackout? Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program. That's why I brought it. Thought it was 1 p.m. Uh, terribly sorry about the misunderstandings, please. Hmm. I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a tape program, hmm? Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one, Chief. It shit and I came from the television. There was a fucking blackout, man. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. <gasps> you couldn't have heard a television or a video. Gah! Uh, I will. Gah. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sowart? Uh, no, I... I find it quite puzzling myself, quite. <laughs> ah! Wait, remember now. Uh, Mr. Sowart? The court would prefer to hear an act of red testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. I mean, Judge... <laughs> you should say, he's the one who did it, not saw it. Ah! Oh. All right, Dad, and you seem rather distraught. <gasps> Give me my apologies, Your Honor. <laughs> it uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Sowart. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I uh, saw it, <laughs> just like my name, Frank saw it. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. And that must have been what I saw. Wait a minute, that's the you saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Uh, gladly. Gladly. That's not a clock. It's a statue. Or, that's just how it was presented earlier. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? Y you with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? I mean, I'm a lawyer, bruh. Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, I, I... I saw it! There, uh, okay? That's a clock! Your Honor, if, if I may. 
Uh, yes, Mr. Payne. As to we stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch, you just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. Mm hmm, Mr. Payne, what are you trying to do? That's kind of sus, hmm? I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problem with this testimony now? Um... Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, there's a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it! Prove I went in there! I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with a clock and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. Mm -hmm. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Mr. Saw it. The sound must have left quite an impression on you, huh? <laughs> Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What, what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. Gah. Gah. Would the witness care to elaborate? You just struck the victim with a clock. I... I... Th that day... Uh, I never... Look, I... The clock... Uh, the, I mean, I saw... <laughs> Sheesh. Phoenix got hair bukkakied. <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He killed her and he should burn. Burn. Give him that. I mean, you should say that to yourself, man. Mr. Wright. Uh, Your Honor. You claim the sound of the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think it through carefully. Y Your Honor. The sound Mr. Saw had heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> just just replace clock to cock and this... <laughs> this seems very different. I asked the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce a time. Well, he is the tinker after all. So, we've heard the cock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time is it now? It's 11.25. Gah! As you can see, this cock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sowett heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sowett, try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> you forgot one thing. Uh-oh. What's he talking about now? Well, it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow. It proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder, hmm? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. Oh shit, he's right. <laughs> it's becoming confident. Oh shit. It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Uh, yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately... The sentence of cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sowett. Aw, oh, jeez. Come on, Judge. You already saw how fucking sus he looks. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal, I tell you. Your lawyers are all slime. Um, no, I'm not a slime. I mean, uh, who told you that? <laughs> Shit, how the fuck does he know? <laughs> Holmes had him. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Phoenix is slime, yo. 
Not so fast, Mr. Solid. <laughs> Not so fast, Faker. Mia, I mean, Chief. I mean, love, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? What, babe? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, love, it's over. I can't prove the, cl the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Unless it's you. Can you prove my cock was moving slower that day? <laughs> um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume this cock was three hours slow and think through it. <laughs> Ask yourself, why was the cock three hours slow? <laughs> I don't know, Chief. <laughs> Not much <laughs> friction. <laughs> Figure out the reason, and you'll have your proof. Right. Right? <laughs> Jesus, Chief. Can you not say my name after right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Is Paris, like, three hours slow? No. How am I supposed to know that? I know you can figure it out. There must be some evidence in the court record. Something that can show why the clock was three hours slow find it and he won't have a foot to stand on. Mr. Wright? Y y yes, Your Honor. You say the clock, clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. We have evidence to prove this. This is it. All or nothing. Y yes, Your Honor. I believe I have the evidence that can prove my claim that the clock was three hours slow. <laughs> I'd like to see that. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't running 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast. So it quick shot. The victim had to reset her cock since returning home. That's why the victim you- that's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in the apartment was wrong. Proof enough for ya, Mr. Stowart? Or should I say... Mr. Did it! <laughs> right, it's a court. It's a court case. Be serious. Oh shit, he roofied himself. Oh, older! Older, and I say! Uh, well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright. Uh, y yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find a true culprit at the same time. Um, thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds a defendant, Mr. Larry Butts... Not... Guilty. It turns out that Frank Saw was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day... When Larry went to her apartment, the victim went, wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sauer let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Solid grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. F. Stellari. Oh, wait. It's gonna play the winning team, right? I just love this. Yeah. I still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Th thanks, babe. I owe it all to you. If it wasn't for you, I would have lost. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen the trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the chief looking this happy. Who knows? Maybe I'll get lucky maybe later at night. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. If she's this clad, imagine how... <laughs> imagine how later n later at night would feel. <laughs> My life is over! 
Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. <laughs> Phoenix! <laughs> oh, wait, no. I mean, bad. Bad, bad, bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But... But my Sydney wind is gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... She was a... She ain't nothing but a gold digger. And a duh. <laughs> now, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Congratulations, Harry. <laughs> Harry? You're a wizard now, Harry. Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry, but innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? <laughs> My trick. Oh, no, I couldn't. Oh, back off, pal. She's mine. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, uh, hey. <laughs> Here, uh, take this. It's a present. Uh, a present? For me? Jesus, Mia looks so fucking gorgeous. Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... <laughs> Actually, I made a cock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? Y you made this? <laughs> well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Wait, what? <laughs> what a sudden shift of... What a sudden sh change of tone, man. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And she was just playing me for a fool. Hey, man. Shit happens in life. Don't that make you want to just cry? Don't you want to screw? Larry. Are you so sure? Excuse me? Oh. <laughs> Why did you say that, Larry? What were you looking when you said that, Larry? Hmm? I think she thought quite a lot of you, in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. <laughs> I relate to Larry. Like, I have, like, self-esteem issues, so I kinda relate with this, like, you know. I don't believe that someone may think good of me or something like that when someone, some other people said it to me or some shit. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? <laughs> Chief, what did I say about saying right before my name? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? And come on, Larry. Why would she even bring the state, the statue? Check this out, Larry. Prove positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that cock? It's a cock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. <laughs> Whatever, she probably just needed a cock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy cock to take traveling. Who well, knows, she might have used it for, you know, nighttime purposes. Pleasure purposes, I mean. Well, make it of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. I hope that made it feel a little better. Right? Yeah, babe? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. And my love for you. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Live and learn, just like what Crush 40 in Sonic Adventure 2 <laughs> says. Never let go of what you believe in. Don't listen to Elsa of let it go. Never let go. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner on me? Oh, date? We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. <laughs> Hells yeah! And is it butts? Oh, speaking of Harry, you're saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Uh, maybe over drinks? Ooh. Drinks? Hey, I like your style, Chief. And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, 
Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends, huh? I'm pretty sure it's not going to pay us. <laughs> Unless you count the cock he gave Mia. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Suspense. What does that mean? Who knows? I mean, I know because I played this back then already.